All right, guys, we're going to hop right into it. You know what time it is, the Vitality Handbook. We're taking a deeper dive. Now, we have a five-pillar system. I know you guys have heard about that. BTS, the Vitality Training System. Now, just relax for a little bit and let the soothe sounds of our COO and our creative de director ease and appease your ears. Now, what we're going to do is we'll take a deeper dive on that first pillar, which is your mindset pillar. You have to be able to master the mindset. So I want Nick to expand upon how he, in his opinion, would have the best way of mastering that mindset in those parameters of self-awareness, self-belief, and self-discipline. That's a good question. It's hard to separate them into three, but if I had to choose one, and, and as far as what resonates with me the most, it's going to right. be that self-awareness, because, the, because it's the pursuit of self-knowledge, the pursuit of self-knowledge is something I'm passionate about. It's something that you can never stop. Like, yes. If you ever think you... And then I want to hear your thought about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely believe if you ever think that you stop the pursuit of finding yourself, know thyself, you've lost. Because we know the only constant thing in this universe is change and adaptation. So you always have to be searching. Don't be afraid of continually going on that journey. If you haven't found out what you're looking for, you keep going. All right? So I definitely feel that. So you're saying self-awareness. Give me a little bit more. Get, I, I know you got some in there. Give me a little bit more of that self-awareness like what do you is there some type of code or okay that's what i want to hear I, that, I'm, that's what i'm looking for i need a code let's see you know self-awareness is almost understanding at least as how much i understand it right now is understanding how well to adapt right so how how well do you know yourself to adapt to different situations and even for example covid adapting to situations that you you don't even know are coming so like COVID, like COVID, right COVID. Like COVID, so self-awareness, that's the benefit is being able to adapt on the dime, right? If you don't, if you don't know yourself, then when things happen that are out of your control, like they will happen, then you're not, I think you're going to be less prepared. But a function of that to get to, for me to get my, to know myself per se, right. is going to be expanding my emotional intelligence. So expanding my EQ. Emotional intelligence. Okay, right. I've heard about that. Yeah, so understanding, okay. yeah, so understanding, for example, how you're motivated. Hmm. It's, it's important to know, you know, it's, we can go into the coaching tiers if you, if you want to get into the coaching tiers. I want to hear what you got to say. Come on now, because I'm a, I'm a coach. I mean, listen, I'm a coach of heart. I don't know if you guys are coaches out there. Really listen up. This is some information uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to hear. So give it to me. Oh, yes. EQ, I, I understand that. Emotional intelligence. My brain is understanding that. It's not just like IQ. EQ, got it. All right. Yeah, so it's interesting because we have to wear multiple hats, whether we're wearing the athlete hat, but, you know, more than an athlete. So some people are put on the coaching hat, the training hat, the, the, it, the list goes on. Right. For the coaching hat, right, as I learn more about, let's say, the coaching matrix that John Berardi finessed, um, not only can I apply to others, but also like, you have to be able to apply it to your, yourself so. immediately. And so one part of, like, expanding self-awareness is knowing how you're motivated. Are you somebody who's high motivation, hmm. high skill? That's the first quadrant. Are you someone who's high motivation, low skill? Okay. Are you someone who's high motivation, so, sorry, low motivation, low skill, yeah. and low motivation, high skill? Right. Perfect. So, so quadrant. yeah. So, Got so it. we can, you can talk more about that if you want to. But for me, like self awareness is an ongoing thing. Got to know, for example, how you're motivated. Got to know how you're going to be dealing with stress and with pressure. Mm. And that's the fun part about getting into sports psychology right. without going all over the place, right? Like we have EQ here, right. we have sports psychology here, but all those things basically combine to One increase your self-awareness. Mm -hmm. right. So you're saying having that self-awareness, I believe is the most important. I think having that self-awareness you probably need before you even get into your self-belief and self-discipline, yeah. right? So if you're not aware of yourself, how do you know what program to follow that's made for you specifically. So there's some type of an assessment. So it seems like in that emotional intelligence, do you have this checklist of, of things to make you uh, optimize your self-awareness? Is, is that what we're saying? Is there some, it, it, almost, it almost seems like there's a scoring, like, okay, you have an IQ score. Is there a VQ score? I mean, for sure, you know that the VQ score is this. You know, you don't have any to ask that. Okay. But I'm saying, like, what you were saying is like, how can we measure self awareness, right? So yes. that's how the question 
came about so from like the okay. coaching from the coaching lens it's like if you're working with clients or even if you're improving yourself right you just have that high performer mindset yeah i like that i like that all right so self-awareness self-improvement I, I love that okay so dre i'm gonna pass this over to you okay talking about mastering your mindset nick went over self-awareness right we also have self-belief and self-discipline let me know how you would take that approach of mastering the mindset Give it to me raw now. Yeah, I know. Give it to me raw. That's what we're doing here. That's what they say. I was going to say, listen, they say give it to you raw. So, you know, oh, like ODB, <laughs> like ODB. Uh, <laughs> but um, I was, I'm going to go with, I'm going to choose uh, self-belief. I'm going to choose self-belief. Um, eliminating the, the other's judgments, right? Other people judging you, right? So what we're doing right now is self-belief. We're eliminating that fear of, of others' judgment, like having these three cameras, right? Like, who are you to, for y'all to direct yourself, put these cameras on yourself? Who are you to uh, tell me about uh, self-awareness? Who are you to tell me about the five pillars, right? So I would say what we're doing right now is uh, uh, self-belief. For sure. I mean, that's fire. I mean, you have to believe in yourself to actually produce for yourself, to be an entrepreneur, you have to have the highest level of belief in self at all odds from how we grew up, coming from combat gyms, yeah. right? Coming from taking pennies on the dollar, working for other companies. We won't even mention other companies that, that are some of the biggest companies in America that has not seen our value because we didn't see our value. So once we believed our value, we're like, Dre, your fire, your angles, your creative eye. We're investing in, in cameras. And it's funny that he say that, right? So also, too, having the self-belief, but also, too, positive people around you that's reinforcing, right? You like, you believe in yourself, but you're like, damn, do I? You know, you go through these little, damn, am, am I? And then when you say, Dre, your angles are fire, blah, blah, yo, listen, I need you to shoot. Wow. So, like a, so like a team, then? Yeah, a team. Cre creating a team. Yeah. yeah, you have to have a team. So, so surrounding your yourself. So, so since we're on the on topic, so what kind of mindset do you need to create a team? Um, all right, let's go, let's go. No, no, we are, yeah, we're going. No, so it's a conversation. It's a conversation. Uh, I would say, oof, play your role. Know your role, right? This guy, y'all here, I'm not, I'm not trying, oh, you know what? Hey, I'm the guy behind the camera. I'm, I, I'm not even, right, well, this is uh, peak by tell. This is the team. So I am. Um, I'm not gonna say that. I'll, I'll. I won't say that. Keep this in here. Yeah. By the way, right? This is raw, raw footage. Yeah. I mean, I. I think what what you what what from my understanding right, so, of what you're saying. Oh, yeah. let, let me let me go. So, Yao isn't looking to come and be like, I want to be the director. Yao is like, I don't even want to deal with that. What aperture? What three point? Nah, man. I'm not. I'm not like. Oh, let me sit in my room. Let me study. I know what I gotta do. I gotta do X, Y, Z. I'm gonna be the host. Like. This is tough what he's doing, right? So I'm not trying to take this spot. When Nick is doing this operating, you, you don't see him swerving up potholes. Shout out to Drizzy. <laughs> you know, at night, you know, dropping us off, coming back to grind. Like, you know, it's like. So I told y'all to kind of stop. That's all right, man. You keep it raw. Listen, we want to hear raw information, how you actually think. Why should you be part of a team? Why do we need a team? Playing your role. Know your role, play your role. And, that, and that's it, right? People, I mean, the easiest answer uh -huh. is to be like, oh, you know, having no ego. Right. All of us have, you know, egos in our own right. Right. right? I mean, that's the easiest answer right. to say, have no ego, have this. Everyone uh, ha has some uh, type of ego, but not uh, let the ego take over. Yeah. Right. right. So that's what I mean about play your role. Right. I'm not letting my ego. Know who, yeah, know who you are. I mean, when it comes, that really comes yeah. down to yeah. that self-awareness. So, you, I mean, if you're... If you're going to be on a team, you have to be aware of what your role is. I know my role is not an operator. If I was to operate, uh, this operation would be in flames. If I was to get behind that camera, it would take, <laughs> it would take, me, it would take me 10 weeks to, to edit. Nick, look, he hit his face and said, oh, my God, yeah. And me, it's about having a vision. Nick makes sure my vision makes sense and it's structured. Dre, make sure it's presented to the world in a way that you can digest it. And that's how the team goes.
I'm aware of my skill. He's aware of his skill. He's aware of his skill. And I think having that team mindset, knowing your role, that's perfect. That's awareness. Nice, perfect. So what do we, uh, y'all think about um, self-discipline? I'll take this one. So when we're talking about that self-awareness that Nick was uh, alluding to, and then we talk about your self-belief, and then knowing your awareness on the team to be more of a team, team player, I think discipline comes into uh, do your job. Ooh, you gotta, you gotta, Ooh, you gotta do your job. I wasn't ready for uh for y'all to be uh you got, you got to cut throw job. like that. Now, see, two personalities. So the one personality is what we call the wizard, where I just flow. I just flow. Uh, the other personality you guys might see is I have a professor of me. So that's that yo. You seem to say that's for the caller. Now I'm relaxed. Now I'm relaxed. It's square in the pocket. You know what I'm saying? So I would say discipline is just do what you're supposed to do. Right? That's it. What does your program say? Do your program. What is your v, where's your v, v, VQ score? Is it low? Uh, do your program to make sure it gets higher. Hold on, hold on. They said, you said do what you're supposed to do, but what if they don't know what to do? What if someone's like conflicted, right? Now, I love that confliction because that's being skeptical. And we know from the Fifth Agreement by Don Miguel Ruiz, you have to be skeptical. You have to be skeptical, right? But you also have to learn to listen, right? So if someone presents you with a program and you came to them, you paid for them, right? Then you should at least be skeptical, do your research if you want, whatever that means, but then learn to listen to the program. Do it. If it works, and it works. If not, don't change your goal, change the program. So the best thing is you have to have a perfect assessment for your awareness. You have to have a perfect assessment for your belief. And you have to have a perfect assessment for your discipline. Once you assess all of those, you can make a program that was made individually for you. And that's literally what we're trying to, what we're not trying, what we're doing here at Peak Vitality Solutions is we're finding solutions that will help transform your individual experience, your journey that we're taking a deep dive on mastering your mindset. So to add on to that, that's key, right? So from, from putting the coaching hat on real quick, I'm gonna drop drop a jewel right here. Okay. Gotta drop this jewel. Come ready, come okay. ready. I'm too young to be dropping jewels, but I'm gonna drop them nah. anyway, okay? Oldest young man I know. Basically, we're as a trainer, as a coach, even as a consultant, when you're talking about um, helping people navigate wellness or vitality like like what we do, you're really in the in, in the industry and you're really in the game of behavior change. One hundred percent. So that's really what you're in the game of. And this is what I've been telling the Yale behind the scenes. Um, and so what we do at PBS is that we're equipping the mindset pillar and the assessment behind the mindset pillar to be so refined, so research-backed. Because at the end of the day, we need to really understand who that person is psychologically to understand how we're going to be changing their behavior. Okay. And I've been trying to validate that point. As a side note, I've been trying to validate that point to understand what comes first. Does psychology come first or does behavior come first? Right? That's the difference between like so in, in chick, chicken and the egg. So I've been doing is a great book called Nature versus Nurture. Great, great book called The Deep History of Ourselves, which goes into, I'm still reading it, it's, it's dropping big gems. Um, but those are the type of questions I think of. But yeah, I mean, behavior change is key. That's really what we're in the industry of. So we have to really understand how that mindset works, how, why someone's not being disciplined. If they're not being disciplined, why are they not following the program? I, 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 I say that's digging deep, but you've answered, you've answered your own question, right? So everything is in the assessment, right? Gray Cook says uh, the test is the exercise and the exercise is the test. So Who's Gray Cook? Who's Gray Cook? Sorry. Oh, Cook is, is one, 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 of, one of the most uh, premier physical therapists. We wouldn't call him a physical therapist, a movement specialist. He's the uh, owner and the creator of Functional Movement Screening Test, so FMS. So we also have our own movement screening <clears throat> called RHM, Restorative Human Movement. Um, it's out now, so. You don't, you don't, you don't have to be so, so subtle with your flex, okay. man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have to be so subtle with the flex, man. <laughs> so let's wrap up here. So we do a little thing here on every episode. We're going to wrap up. How can we apply this to all of our lives, right? So we're telling you our experiences. How can we apply this to all of our lives, right? So we have mindset, mastery of mindset. We talked about awareness. We talked about belief. We talked about discipline. And we talked a little bit about your VQ score. 
right? How can we now take your VQ score? How can we assess that? Well, luckily we actually have an actual questionnaire, an assessment to find out what your VQ score is, right? So it's our vitality triage questionnaire uh, by going on to peakvitalitysolutions.com. You can select one of those, go in contact, and we'll have our young lady, uh, Katie Emerson, uh, get that out to you. So let's wrap it up here. How can we actually apply this to people out there? What is the your one-two pitch that we can get to these people out there? How are we going to apply that? So taking that mastery of mindset, you said self-awareness. How are they going to apply that self-awareness now? So how do you, are you asking me how I would coach it? How would you coach it if you were someone, uh, let's say someone out there that's saying, huh, I want to, I want to have more self-awareness. I'm coming to you guys. I'm coming to us, Peak Vitality Solutions. How do I now become more self-aware? I would start with reading on emotional intelligence. It's just real, real simple. Like actually do the work that it says to do in the book. A lot of people get the book and just let it sit there. Sometimes it happens. That's okay. Know yourself enough to know whether you need an audible over a book right there. <laughs> but make sure you need, you know, I would say to, you know, to start with self-awareness, look into uh, emotional intelligence to give, give yourself a framework to how to interpret all the experiences you've gone through in your life and, uh, you know, to expand that. EQ. Right. Keep it simple like that. Right. Okay. So for me, I'm all about audible, right? I like to listen. My wife, she's a brainiac. She likes to turn the pages. So figure out what works for you and then use that application through the audio books and actually apply it. And I love that. Do the work, right? Okay. So Dre, give us a rapid fire here. Um, I think we picked upon belief. Yeah, belief. So um, I'm going to go um, coach, coaching, okay. right? Coaching a client okay. style, like um, positive reinforcement, right? Positive reinforcement okay. uh, with, with a client, right? So, oh, Drew, I can't do um, uh, five push-ups. What are you talking about? Right. Yes, you can. I know you can do five push-ups. You did, you, you, you did three already, right. right? You did three. I guarantee you could do five. You want it, right? Yeah. Give them that self-belief. Right. How much you want to bet? All right. Uh, nah, uh, you know what? Okay. Let's wait. I, I guarantee you can do it, right? They do five, boom. See, I told you, man. I, love that. I told, come on, man. What are you talking about? I know what I'm talking about. Come on, you know. Having that interaction, that's perfect. Yeah. I mean, having that interaction with your clients as a coach, you're not just there to one, two, three. Okay, see you next week, Julian. <laughs> you actually have to have that interaction to make sure that they feel motivated. Like Nick said, that's one of the EQ. You have to have that motivation. What motivates you? High motivation, let me see if I remember. High motivation, high skill, low motivation, high skill, low skill, low motivation, and then somebody else that's perfect. I don't know. I think it was <laughs> some, something, something like that. If you guys know, comment in the comment section. Let us know how well you were listening to the Terminator. Comment on the coaching matrix. Yes. If you know about the coaching matrix, comment about how that's helped your coaching business or maybe helped yourself understand how you how to navigate with all your goals yeah perfect okay guys so we're gonna wrap this up mindset pillar let us know how we did we want you to comment first because the community that we're building we want that interaction to let us know what you liked what we should talk about later all right our next episode you already know we're following down that train of bts mindset next one's gonna be sleep fellas you guys ready for that why do we sleep oh god <laughs> On that note, remember, always choose to heal and not destroy your body because every day we're given the choice to either do that, heal or destroy your true vitality. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Let's get into it. Boom. Boom, boom, boom.